kind of more inquisitive amongst you may be wondering what I'm doing and what's inside this rather dubious looking plastic bag it's not at all what you think a big aspect or at least a developing aspect of what I do out and about is collecting lava I've quite got into finding lava and rearing them through if I don't recognize the lava to species I can rear them through and then ultimately when the moth hatches out I know what it is and I've learned a bit about the life cycle in the process sometimes lava can be identified as the mature it is possible there are a couple of good websites that help you in that way so that's what this is this is a range of various food plants that I need to refresh the food plant in the containers that I've got at home that contain several species of lava. I only rear small amounts of lava, usually ones and twos of most species. It's something that I used to do in the 1980s and I've started to like again. It's quite a relaxing pastime. So this little video then, I've been asked a number of times by various people to do a video about rearing caterpillars. Several people have been absolutely terrified and mortified at the thought of taking a small defenseless little caterpillar home with them and then possibly killing it. It's not as difficult as you might think and certainly some species are easier than others and we'll be looking at one in particular that's relatively indestructible even in inexperienced people's hands. So then, having acquired your larva, this one's actually starting to eat, you need to think about housing. Housing is simple, so simple, you just need a container like these. These small plastic rectangular containers are relatively airtight and they are ideal for keeping your prized larva. You don't need air holes. Air holes just allow the food plant to dry out quickly and the larva use very little air and it's just a simple matter of putting your larva into your container. Then in that container you need a fresh supply. I'm just putting a single leaf in in this instance and this is goat sallow food plant of Pusma. Close your lid Make sure it's secure. Job done. And that's your basic setup. And that larva will be happy in there for at least another instar. What I tend to do to avoid frass from the larva accumulating on the food plant, I tend to keep these containers upright. That way the frass doesn't accumulate on the food plant just at the bottom there and the larva is kept clean. The containers need cleaning out daily. Some people put clean tissue paper at the bottom. I do with some species, but many species I've never bothered with. And with pus moss, they are as hardy as anything. Pus moss are ideal larva to start with rearing because they are very easy to keep and they'll put up with most of the mistakes that newcomers will make. Also, they're absolutely cracking things as they grow. These are really spectacular caterpillars. So, that little chap is fine in there now for a number of days. It's always best if you're changing food plant, quite often I'll have a small sprig of the food plant in with three or four leaves on it. And you don't need to take the caterpillar off the leaf that it's on. You can leave that caterpillar where it is. Chances are it might be in the process of molting. Never interfere with caterpillars if they are molting. And you'll know when they are because the head capsule will move further forward. So 
So as your caterpillar starts to grow, you will need larger housing. The next size up from this is this size container, same sort of dimensions, but just on a larger scale. And these are ideal. And again, I tend to keep these upright. All the frass accumulates. It's a lot easier to keep things cleaner that way. When the lava has grown even more, these are ideal. They're also very nice. What comes in them, these are a well-known brand of chocolates. And if you was to buy a container like this from an entomological supplier, you would be paying a lot more than what you do when you buy one of these filled with chocolates. On the plus side or downward side, if you've got diabetes or anything like that, it's not good for you to eat the chocolates. But just give them the wife. But you're left with a fabulous container and it's as airtight as these. Other containers are these cylindrical ones. There are various types of cylindrical containers. Some, these are the best ones with a metal screw top lid. These are really airtight. They come in different sizes. Quite often our rear lava singly as they get larger in these containers. You can keep eggs in these smaller types of containers until they hatch or even once they've hatched for any length of time. And as the larva grows, so does the container that you house them in. The same principles apply. You maintain cleanliness at all time. Never put in wet food plant. Always ensure that the food plant you collect for your larva is dry before giving it to them. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not as difficult as you think. And it's a lot of fun and it's incredibly rewarding. The only disadvantages is that once your pus moth larva has pupated and you've made the necessary arrangements for pupation, it varies from species to species. So you need to do a little bit of research into your caterpillars needs compupation. Puss moths are only single brooded, so if you collect one now, in the beginning of June, you won't see the result or fruits of your labours and perseverance until next May. <laughs>